Another interesting feature of Unity is the usage of particle systems. So what are particle systems? They are uh, systems that can easily add uh, beautiful particles to your game. Okay, so to make one, we can just go to a hierarchy here, right click, and then we can select particle system. And when we have the particle system selected here, okay, let's change its position to something like zero, zero, zero. So it looks like this. And you notice that we can see, uh, well, some white uh, clouds getting out of the exact position where the particle system is, which is the origin of uh, these arrows here. So we can move the particle system just like any other object that we want, okay, to any position that we want. So if we want to make it to be in the cube, we can just drag the particle system to be in the cube, okay, which takes us to another subject. Notice that the particle system here is at the position 0, 0, 0. But if we move it to the cube, okay, it's in the exact same place in the scene, but the position changed to 0, 1.50. It does that because this position that we see here is local, so it's relative to the parent. Okay? Since the cube is in the position 0, minus 1.50, the particle system went to the opposite place in the vertical position, so its world position is the origin. Okay, but if we want the particle system to come out to uh, from wherever the cube is, we can just change it to zero. So you notice here that the particle is right in the middle. Okay, so the particle systems are kind of complex, okay, because there are so many settings to the particle system. If you take a quick look here by scrolling down, you're going to see that there are lots of settings here, and there are lots of other settings in here, okay, so it takes a, quite a while to take a look on all of these, so let's just look at the important ones. So, first of all, notice that we have this particle effect menu here in the scene window, so at any time we can pause, we can stop the simulation or just start the simulation again to see the particles coming out of the cube, okay, like this. It's a pretty uh, wide area that we see here. And the duration is basically for how long this particle system is going to happen. Okay, so if we change it to one, it's going to be a bit quicker, but well, let's leave it at five. So the start delay is how much it's going to wait once the game starts, so the particles start coming out. So if we change start delay to three and hit simulate, we're going to wait exactly three seconds until the first particles start coming out. Okay. So let's leave this as one, just because, okay? So the lifetime is how long each of the particles are going to, uh, to be alive, okay? How long it's going to, to, we're going to wait until they start disappearing. So if we change the lifetime to one, notice that they are uh, getting uh, killed much earlier, okay? They reach barely this height here and they start disappearing. But let's leave it that way. Okay. And speed is, well, as you might suspect, if you change this to a high number, they're going to move much faster than before. But if it's a slow number, they're going to barely exit the cube. Okay, let's leave it at 3. And we have other things here, like we might change the rotation if we want, we can change the color. So, for example, if you click here and choose yellow, for example, we directly change the particle color. Okay. And something that is interesting in the, is the gravity modifier. So this is what we want to do. Let's get this particle system and we're going to rotate it. I'm going to select the rotating tool. We're going to grab the green circle and we're going to make it like this. Okay. And if we apply the gravity modifier, if we use one here, notice that the particles are falling, just like physics is applied to them. Okay. And we can increase the speed to make them to, to be propelled a bit more backwards. Okay, so it, I think it gives an interesting effect. If we start tuning this to something like this, okay, let's use start speed as 6. We apply the gravity modifier. And if we make the cube move to the right, it's going to, to have an interesting effect. Okay, and some, there's something that is important here. Okay, notice that there's a property that is called simulation space and it's called local in here, okay? So if we move this particle system around, like I'm doing right now, notice that all the particles are following this game object. Okay, remember, we have this particle system game object which contains a particle system component. If I move the game object, all of the particles are following. However, if we move the simulation space to world, Apparently, is it is the same thing, okay, and if we leave it local, it's going to be like this, if we leave it world, it's going to be like this, but if we use world, and we move this 
notice that not all the particles are following, okay? It's like the particles are now independent of this game object, okay? Uh, if, for example, if the game object is here, the particles that are going to appear when I put it here are independent from the other one, okay? But if we use the local, it doesn't matter how quick I move, all of them are going to follow this game object, okay? So we want to give this uh, to, to use world here because we want to, to make an interesting effect soon enough. Okay, and later if you want, you can take more a uh, uh, better look on these other settings that we have here. So if we increase the rate, or if you decrease it, you're going to see lesser particles than before. We can use uh, eight, for example, and you can change the shape of the area that is being used for uh, throwing these particles. Okay, so you can make a cone that contains a very slow, ang a very small angle or a wide angle like this. Well, it's just experiment. Okay, be curious, open these things, and start uh, changing these properties. Okay, so in the next video, now that we have this cube that contains a particle system inside it, let's make this cube move.